Chapter 2, Setup and Configuration. In this chapter, we're going to take a few minutes to set up your local development environment. First, we'll show you where to find the latest stable versions of the software we're going to install. Then, we'll step you through the downloading, installation, and configuration of XAMPP and Eclipse. Lastly, and most importantly, along the way, we'll show you how to check that your development environment is working properly. By the end of this chapter, you'll have your own fully functioning PHP web development environment. All of the tools you'll need are available through open source software licenses. This means they're free to obtain and you're free to use them. For PHP web development, you'll need a number of software applications. To edit files, manage projects, and debug entire web applications, an integrated development environment, or IDE, such as Eclipse is needed. To serve web pages and perform PHP script processing, you'll need a web server that supports PHP. Apache is the most widely used and generally considered to be the most stable. Finally, you probably already have a web browser. Everyone has their preference here. Ours is Mozilla Firefox. Don't forget, though, that the vast majority of people use Internet Explorer, so make sure to test everything that you create with at least these two browsers. In the past, it was a bit of a chore to install each piece separately. Within the past few years, though, a number of single install software bundles have been created. This makes it fast and easy to set up your development environment. We'll start off by opening our favorite web browser and going to www.apachefriends.org slash en slash xamp dash windows dot html. The software bundle we're going to install is called XAMPP. For this video, we're going to be using the Apache web server and, of course, PHP. To get it, scroll down to the download section and click on the installer link. This opens a new page from SourceForge where we're prompted to download a file. Click Save File now select a temporary folder or your desktop and click Save. When the download's done, open the folder where we saved the file and double-click to run it. If you're using Windows Vista and haven't already disabled user account control, you'll have to do that now before proceeding with the setup. And simply accept the defaults for the rest of the installation. Now it wasn't that easy. Click Finish to close the installer. We're given the option to start the control panel now, so let's do that by clicking Yes. From the control panel, start the Apache web server by clicking on the Start button beside Apache. The document root is a special folder where web pages, scripts, images, and other web accessible content is stored. By default, this is c colon slash xamp slash htdocs. To test the web server installation and prepare the file system for later examples, we need to copy the example files for this video into the document root of the web server. Now go back to the browser and load localhost slash php video slash source slash test dot php. When you see the PHP info screen, everything's working fine. The second component we'll install is the IDE. In your browser, go to download.eclipse.org slash tools slash pdt slash downloads. Click on the latest release build then click on PDT All-in-One for Windows. From the Mirror Selection page, pick the server closest to you. And when prompted, save the file. When the download's done, open the folder where you saved the file and extract the compressed file into a temporary folder. 
Now PDT doesn't come with an installer, but that's not a problem. We just need to open the folder where we extracted the files and copy the Eclipse folder into the Program Files folder. When that's done, go to Program Files slash Eclipse and right-click on Eclipse.exe. Click on Send To and select Desktop to create a shortcut to Eclipse on your desktop. Now let's use the desktop shortcut we just created to start up the Eclipse IDE. When prompted for a workspace, enter c colon slash xamp slash htdocs slash php video to use the example project folder and hit OK to continue. When Eclipse first starts up, the welcome screen is shown. Click on the icon to the right to go to the workbench. Now in the Project Explorer pane, you can click on the arrow beside the Source folder to expand the tree and see all of the example files in this project. The benefit of having a local development environment is that it lets us make changes to files then immediately see the results in our browser. Let's open Example 1 to see this in action. This is a very simple PHP script that we'll take a closer look at in the next chapter. If we switch to the browser and load this script, we see that the text from our example script is displayed. Now let's change this file, save it, then switch back to the browser and refresh the page by pressing F5. Immediately, our changes are shown. In this chapter, We've shown you where to find the development tools you need to get started with PHP today. We've also shown you how to install those tools and check that everything's working. If you run into problems doing this on your own, here are some of the many websites with information that can help.